welcome back to Bard's Tale 3. Um, this is Jay Rodman, and today we're gonna try taking on the second tower in the Ice Keep in Galidia. It seems that... Oh, my Bard song just ended, how awkward. Um, it seems that each tower is probably gonna give us one lens for that golden disc. And I don't know what's gonna happen when we get all three. This is just an assumption because the first tower gave us, the gray tower, gave us a smoky lens. And um, there are three slots in the disc and three arrows pointing to three towers. So presumably, go clear each tower, get each disc, put it in the slot, something will happen. Incidentally, um, I was just finishing mapping the outside of Galidia. I don't know why, but I was very dissatisfied with not knowing where every last rock was. So I wandered around here and found all the rocks and mapped them all and went freezing the whole time and kept having to heal, my, heal myself. Maybe I should have recorded it, but I didn't. Um, maybe I got 30,000 experience and fought a bunch of things you've already seen. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to do is head into the keep and go to the disk location and verify that the smoky lens is still there because I'm a little unclear about the save mechanics in this game. In the original Bard's Tale there was no world state at all. There was only your party Oh, I, I'm putting in side A boot instead of side A dungeon. Side A dungeon. There we go. Um, so the only way the game knew that you had completed quests is because you had items in your inventory that you received from completing those quests. Um, I don't know if that's the same in Bard's Tale 2, but I think it is. I think they didn't rewrite that at all. So I'm a little unsure how this altar will know that we've satisfied it. Uh, I know that there's a quest flag, a global quest flag that gets set on every person in the party, uh, which is how it knows not to give you quest rewards again. But I'm a little unclear how it would know which item you had dropped off and um, I mean, it's possible there could be like bit flags for all of that, but whatever, I'm going to go look. So instead of wandering through all of these spinners, I'm just going to teleport there. And it looks like, according to my map, it's 9 north and 4 east. Zero up. Yep, teleport. So we should find ourselves warped over here, and we are. Uh, slab of white marble, flush on the floor. The thing I want to check is the third message. Okay, so somehow we have lost progress. The crystal circle is empty, the smoky circle is empty, the black circle is empty. So I'm probably going to have to do the gray tower again. Whatever, I've already mapped it. But that's not what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm not going to go upstairs. Uh, how difficult is it to get over here? Um, it involves a spinner. So, I'm teleporting. One, two, three, four. A shimmering magical curtain that looks very much like an aurora borealis, that's a northern lights in case you don't know, shifts and sways between you and a doorway. Scrawled on the wall, lift the veil, then counter it. 
false door freeze true I think this is one phrase false door freeze true door I'm not really sure if this is one phrase it's got a capital and everything I think it's just being clever in the way it's writing it so I think we have four spells to cast um, if you wanna figure this out yourself definitely go off to the Bard's Tale manual on the Bard's Tale Online, Bard's Tale 3 manual, and flip through the spells and try to figure them out. I personally, so that is, I'm waiting for that to happen, pause the video if you want to do it. Okay, so, I'm going to start trying to figure it out now. I don't actually know the answers. Lift the Veil to me sounds like see through things, so that could be Sorcerer's Sight or Second Sight. It could also be um, Disrupt Illusion. I'm going to start off with Disrupt Illusion. That was wrong. So I guess I, this isn't the best puzzle in the sense that uh, there's some amount of just guessing or maybe some people would be smarter than I am. Okay, that wasn't it. If it was to be Sorcerer's Sight or Second Sight, that would be bad, a bad clue, because um, how would you know which one it was? Okay, so, at this point, I'm going to start looking through the spell list. Let's see if I can reshape the browser to fit. Um, trap Zap seems unlikely. Freeze Foes, Arc Fire, Mage Flame, Word of Healing, Less Revelation. Uh, it could be a Revelation spell. But that was not it. Levitation, Instant Wolf, Flesh, Restore. Port Arcane doesn't seem very likely. Eerie Enchant, no. Mystic Shield. Uh, Anti Magic, I guess? I'm doubtful though. I'm betting it's going to be a sorcerer spell. I'm surprised it was not Disrupt Illusion. Oh, you know, Disbelief is, makes more sense. Nope. Lift the Veil. Nope. That's definitely not it. I guess I could try casting them all, but that seems stupid. I definitely feel like it should be Second Sight, Disrupt Illusion, or Disbelieve, but those are all too... I don't know, if it's any one of them, it could be any of them. Preclusion makes a certain kind of sense. But it's not it. Uh... Prime summoning is a way is like brings in a creature from another plane. Lift the veil then counter it. That could imply Oh, the veil. Lift the veil meaning meaning the what's on the other side? Picking the wrong number. Uh, 
I don't know. I, I or maybe anime dead is the same is is what counts. I definitely feel like I am missing the point. Uh, heal is a stronger form of beyond death. In a way, identify is lifting the veil, but um, I there's no counter for that. I guess one question would be, what does counter it mean? Incidentally, I am wondering whether I get a number of uses on the trick brick now that I've identified it. No, so I, I'm still a little perplexed as to why some trick bricks have a number and some of them don't. Oh, but I can equip it again now. Trick bricks. Oh, so I. <laughs> Let's finish the spell investigation first. Well, Grave Robber is sort of a lifting of the veil, but no. Hmm. Okay, so what if they mean something a little more literal about some of the words? Because veil, I've gone very heavily on the veil. What about lifting? Oh, is it that stupid? Mm. Six levitation. Okay, that was it. So. How do you counter levitation? Making things fall? I don't have a making things fall spell, so I'm just going to try anti-magic. Okay, that was right. False door freeze. Mm, false door freeze true door. Uh, I mean... I'm assuming phase door is in here somewhere. But I don't know. Oh. It's just one spell. False door, freeze, true door somehow means phase door. So there are only three spells for that puzzle. I thought that was four. Um, that was much less satisfying than the last one. But, in any event, we are on to a tower. We are in the White Tower. And... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a little minor cleanup here. Uh, how do I... Oh, X? Yeah. This is This is the remains of the gray tower with some notes that are no longer needed. Okay, uh... Oh, and we have like some text to read that I'll do in a moment. Uh, if I create a new region while on this region, will I inherit its properties? And I've decided I don't actually want a ground floor in these towers. I'll fix the other one later. Yes. Okay. So. Oh, and I went ahead and hit it. That's exactly what everyone needed. Okay. Um, so we started in the southwest corner. Which means this one can just use the default behavior of show axis values and they'll put the numbers on for me. Great. I'm gonna leave the auto map and do a Ram of Duo time 
while I get set up, because that will start refilling my spell points. Okay, reading it off. Inch thick seats. <laughs> Let me try again. Inch thick sheets of ice coat the tower walls. Stone carvings, barely visible beneath the icy, icy sheath, remind you of the splendor that was once Castle Lanatier. Oh! The Ice Keep is Castle Lanatier. I didn't know. I'm going to type off camera. Okay, finish typing that. Um, the next thing is to start putting these walls down. Well, okay, maybe I should put this stairway in. Uh, oh, in the default color would be good. Okay, so we're looking east currently, and there's a door to the north. Always, always the door I don't want. This door, okay, and then there's some walls, maybe a dead end? I'm not sure if there's a dead end or, or if it's just a turn to the north. south and west, but to the north, another corridor. And given that we're in a ring here, I'm going to bet it's a ring all the way around. We'll find out, though. Okay, uh, taking a time out from our current explorations, because I'm never going to remember to talk about this later, um, I'm going to do a brief look through some inventory sorting I did. So, um, the main thing is, the most important part, well, there's some different bits. One of them is this yellow staff I determined actually increases the spell points of Lillian, like the mage staff does with Elendor. The main theme here is I think remembered magic items sometimes aren't use, they're sometimes equip. So this yellow staff improves her armor class and regenerates spell points. It's kind of like a combination of a shield staff and a mage staff. I thought it was a weapon because you couldn't use it. it shows what I know. Um, another thing I figured out is the trick brick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another item. The trick brick causes spell point, sorry, hit point regeneration, um, which you can't tell now because their hit points are full, but um, I'm carrying them around anyway, and I'm not. that's not going to prevent me from using them when it seems appropriate, but a small amount of free healing is a good thing. Here's the part I figured out with um, equipping. The Wand of Fury, which I also was carrying around anyway, does like a dragon breath attack. Uh, gives you one point better armor class, which isn't a huge deal for casters, but it's free armor and I was carrying them around anyway. And I think... Oh, right, and I, f I found while mapping those stones out in the frozen waste elf boots. Uh, I don't currently know what they do, but Elena was using nothing in that slot, so I equipped them. They didn't help her armor class. See, her armor class stays unchanged. But I figure they must do something good. I mean, you know, elves are good, right? They, know, they wouldn't, like, make cursed shoes. Probably. Um, oh, and I uh, stashed a, a few of the bombs, like dynamite and holy TNT. It didn't seem like everyone needed to have two bombs. Um... And I'm not probably going to use more than one or two in a combat. Okay, so let's head. N let's go back to exploring. I want to try north first. And so far, no special squares at all. Mr. Automap does not suggest anything weird is going on. Uh, it does, however, look like these are dead ends. And over here, apparently, it's a door on the north side. I couldn't tell, but auto map could.
Uh, it really kind of bothers me that Sorcerer Sight cannot detect spell point drain in this game, because it sure can in Bard's Tale 2. I think Bard's... I'm not sure about Bard's Tale 1. Uh, so in this row, we have a spinner and a something. Option and something. And it looks like I'm in a fight. Uh, multiple. This this is not my favorite looking fight. Mm. I will use a lot of spell points for this, without question. I'm gonna choose to run away. And part of the reason for that is that um, I don't have the right bard song playing for fighting. I should probably change that up. Okay, so there's a quiet zone at the end of this corridor. Uh, one cult mage, rhyme lord. I can. This is this is fine. I can fight this. Cult mages bring their friends, though. So I should cast the No Bringing Your Friends spell. Or sing the No Bringing Your Friends song, is what I meant to say. I like that the mage is spending his time trying to summon friends that aren't that won't come. Ooh, a diamond plate. I wonder if that's better or worse than a titan plate. I'm thinking it's worse, because when I used the titan plate, I went up three points. And also, diamond plates go all the way back to Bard's Tale 1, so I bet they're not as good as the, th the one I've never heard of before. Well, heard I probably used it before in a previous playthrough, but don't remember. Okay, so Lady Oak Shield's gonna try equipping this. Goes from negative 25 to negative 26. Yes, this is definitely a smaller upgrade, but still an upgrade. No special squares detected there. Oh, that was that's right. I can't assume that the silence was there because you can't detect on a word square. Anyway, whatever. Uh, in this line, there is a something. So almost certainly the something is in this square because I saw it here and here. And yeah, I think it can only be there because uh, this is the only square that I prevented me from detecting. So. Something is here. Now we're going to step one more. Ice bears and a glacier golem. Ah, eh, fight. Even though I don't have a bard song run running.
There's only, I think, one enemy here that can do party-wide damage, which is the Golem. And Lena failed to kill it, subjecting my party to 90-ish damage. Alina, you are a failure. Glacier, the bear, attack a bear. And I'm going to waste a little bit of time healing up. That's probably enough. Song on, on again. Okay, and the spinner is almost certainly here. From here, we can see a trap, and we know very little about where it is actually because uh, from this corridor, we only looked east. I'm going to choose to start, I'm going to choose to enter the space here and not worry too much about pre-determining, wait, what's going, oh, I didn't move far enough, pre-determining the location of the trap. Uh, three glacier golems. This will not be hit point positive, but I can just heal afterwards. Uh, I'm going to advance. Ow. Attack, attack, bard song, hide. Then we'll be down to one glacier golem, I think. full again. Uh, looking east, we can sense a trap. So there must be a trap here. And I can go ahead and get rid of it now. Uh, we 
can still sense the something. Uh, it looks like, um... I saw my hit point, my spell points change, and I think they went down. And I'm gonna have to turn in a moment, so we'll find out for sure. Uh, we can detect the silence, which I already knew about. Yep, we're standing in a hit point train. Or spell point drain, rather. And we can sense a trap in front of us. One, two, three, which means there's another trap. Okay, so step forward first. That is not spell point drain. Or actually, it was loading a fight, so it maybe is. Oof, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to try to watch the spell points at the end of the fight, or if I run away. I'm not going to run away, there's only one group of mages. We'll only blow some spell points. Mm. I'm really curious whether uh, this trick brick will run out. So I'm going to use it on, I guess, the Actually, there's no one that makes sense to use a group attack spell on, so I'm going to defend. Um, you're going to cast... Is there any point? Anti-magic. And you should try to pull in the mages. Okay, so the mage pull worked. Maybe I should have preemptively attacked, hoping it would work, but I didn't. So Grisnak and Lady Oakshield should assassinate those mages. Chantrell will keep singing for hit points. Uh, Elena will hide to reach the back, to reach the further monsters, and I don't feel the need to cast any more spells, at least yet. It is interesting how Elena Hidden doesn't get hit by spells. I didn't really remember it working that way, and I didn't expect it to work that way. But apparently it does. I'm going to try killing, have Elena kill a uh, Glacier Golem. which works. There's still a great Glacier Golem left, but one Glacier Golem, I don't think, with an anti-magic up, I don't think can kick out uh, nearly... Oh. I don't know what I stoned then. Maybe there were two Jack Frosts? Or maybe a Jack Frost summoned a friend and I didn't notice. Hit points look pretty reasonable, except for Chantrell. I'm going to continue to risk. Okay, so... I'm going to let her hit points ride for now to save spell points. Now, I'm going to look at Elendor's magic points, 329. If they go down, we're standing on a green spot. They went up, which I think was just timing based. Okay, so this is not a spell point drain.
Oh, I can't... But before I leave, let's get rid of that trap. So looking north, we can't sense a trap anymore. There isn't one here then. And there are stairs, which are invariably going to be the stairs up to the next level there. Whoop, not there. I was just trying to, just trying to select the window. <laughs> okay. Can I please get keyboard mode? Okay. Wall to the north, to the east a wall, to the west a door. So let's go west. Four, seven ice bears. This sounds nice and easy. I'm going to just increase my armor class. Now I'm going to start the healing song. I'm only 30 uh, hit points better off than before the fight, but that's 30 hit points. With some free experience and treasure and a mysterious ring somehow I'm gonna bet it's a death ring oh ho, ho, ho. this is one of my favorite items in the game. Uh, I think Elena wants to keep the shield ring, but I will pass this no spin ring to maybe Elendor? Did she have a ring already? She had the power ring, which I actually don't know what it does. I'm going to hand the power ring off to someone else. Um, okay, so it might be kind of obvious, but what a no-spin ring does is it prevents you from spinning. Or, to be more accurate, spinners don't work. Oh my goodness. It's such a quality of life improvement. I kind of question the inclusion of spinners with the frequency they have them in this game at all. Um, in Bart's Tale 1, they were kind of a less used mapping challenge. Here, in 2 and 3, I think they went overboard. But there is some, you know, satisfaction and experience in the crappiness that is having to deal with the spinners and then finding the ring that turns them off. It is it is uh, pl pleasing that experience at least. Okay, my attempts to pull the glacier mage in failed. I wonder whether... I wonder whether um, anti-magic makes it easier to use our spells on them. Like, because I seem to remember there's a very simplistic, at least in the first game, a very simplistic uh, 
way of resolving conflicts where it's sort of just one number versus one other number. Like your number versus theirs, both when they're casting on you and you're casting on them. Well, I don't know if that if if uh those succeeded because of the luck spell or if they I mean it sure looks like it did because they both worked. Oh, and that was one of those cases where I had two people try to kill the greater demon. One did, and then the enemy mage summoned a new greater demon into the same slot, and the other one attacking that slot killed the resummon. This is another one of those mechanical parts. Earlier we got a bolt. Now we got. Sorry, earlier we got a spanner. Now we have a bolt. I want a compass. How do I spell that? This is a very snaky, snaky set of rooms. I'm anal retentively checking behind me for every step now after that gray tower. Uh, Rhyme Lords and Glacier Golems. The, gl the Rhyme Lords, I think, don't have a nasty group attack, even though the name makes me think they should or would. So I think I'm just going to ride this one out. So, that was our first step into a spinner, where nothing happened at all. There's not even the flash. They just don't get registered. I kind of got um, a little depressed about this my first playthrough, because... It caused my maps to become incomplete. Like, I no longer was able to be 100% certain where every spinner was. 
Uh, it seems a little silly. But that was one of my reactions to it. The other one, of course, was immense relief as having no longer having to deal with that stuff anymore. Oh, we can't phase door. Okay, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I'm gonna go back around and go into here because that's just the kind of player I am, even though we know the way up. Okay, so what is the something this time? It's definitely not a hit point drain. I don't really know what the... I feel like there's a third... So there's hit point drain and spell regen, and I feel like there's some other somethings. So this feels definitely like spell point regen because everything's going up by two. But I thought I saw that um, Elendor's spell points went up even faster than that. Like I thought she ticked up again independently of them, but no, it might have been an artifact of a redraw or something. Can we teleport on this level? One north, two east. No. Okay. That is something I've never bothered to record on my maps is where you can and can't teleport. Um, partly because it just seemed like a recipe for your infuriation. Like, are you going to try to teleport to every single square in the dungeon? Because that would be a way to know for sure where you can and can't teleport. Mm, just, I guess I'm not that dedicated. Now it's time to check on the time of this this session. And yeah, that's about uh, that's about when to stop. Um, here we are on level two of the White Tower. Maybe next time we can get two levels done. We'll see. See you next time. Thanks for watching.